And, and it's kind of amazing because God's been dealing with me the last few months and, and teaching me. And, and, and I just thought, boy, this is a cool sermon. I wish I could do it at the end of the year. <laughs> or the first of the year. Because you see, this is very significant what's going on today. Today is a very special day. Not only is it the last day of this, last Sunday service of this year, it is also the last Sunday service of this decade. And God is very, He takes things like seasons and times very specifically, Lord. They are important to Him. And I believe that today is a very important day to God. It's how we end this service and how we end this decade is going to help usher us into the next decade where there is victory. Oh, I'm telling you. And like, like uh, Casey said earlier, we're going to end our service just a little bit different than what we normally do, okay? So you hang on to your hat, Aunt Maude. This is going to be fun. Because <laughs> I believe God's got something for us today. Because, you see, I wasn't the first person they asked to speak today. I was number three. <laughs> When you're number two, you try harder, but when you're number three, I'm not sure what you do. <laughs> you rejoice, because God closed two doors so that this message could be spoken today. Yeah. All right, I've got to get rid of some of this stuff here. All right. If you have your Bibles, you turn to Isaiah chapter 44, we're going to start off with verse 6. Now I'm reading out of the International Standard Version because that's what I had in my eSword. They didn't have it here. So it's going to be close, but it won't be quite the same, okay? This is what the Lord says, the King of Israel and its Redeemer. The Lord is the heavenly, the Lord of the heavenly armies is His name. I am the first and I am the last. And apart from me, there is no God. Hallelujah. Apart from me, there is no God. I want you to remember that as we go through this uh, sermon today. Now, if you go down just a little bit to verse number 9. And it talks about something about people in those days creating images and, and idols and gods. And we're going to read about that for just a minute here. Now, all the forming of images means nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Their own witnesses cannot see, and they know nothing, so they will be put to shame. Who would cast the shape of a god or an image that profits nothing? To be sure, all who are associated with, with it will be put to shame. And as for the craftsmen, they're only human, let them all gather together and take their stand. Then let them be terrified. They will be humiliated together. The blacksmith prepares a tool and he works in the coals. Then he fashions an idol with hammers. He worketh by the strength of his arm. He even becomes hungry and loses his strength. He drinks no water and grows faint. The carpenter measures it with a line. He traces it and it's shaped with a stylus and then fashions it with a plane and shapes it with a compass. I never used a compass to shape my cabinets with, but I don't know how you use a compass. Anyway. Oh, okay. Cool. He makes the idol like a human figure with human beauty to be at home in a shrine. He cuts down the cedars and he chooses a cedar tree or an oak and he lets it grow among the trees of the forest or he plants a cedar and the rain makes it grow. He divides it up for the people to burn. Part of it, he warms himself and he makes a fire and bakes bread. Or perhaps, place. Or perhaps he constructs a god and worships it and makes it into an idol and bows down to it. Half the wood he burns into the fire. And over that half, he places meat so that he can eat. And then he sits by the coals and warms himself and says, Ah, oh, I am warm in front of this fire. And he takes the rest of it 
to make it to a god to the blocks of wood he bows down and he worships and he prays to it and says save me since you are my god now i can tell y'all gonna need some more detail on this scripture right <laughs> maybe an illustration might help you didn't think i didn't do this did you <laughs> We're going to have fun this morning. Don't worry, I didn't leave. <laughs> okay. I need a hand cart. This stuff's heavy. I'm going to illustrate to you what we are talking about here. used trailer hitch. Matter of fact, it's only part of a trailer hitch. Because, see, I took part of this trailer hitch and cut it up and I made a grate. With this and rebar, I made a grate for my wood stove. Firewood. Oh, I can't, I gotta be careful with that. Setting things down. Because last time I was here, I had that great big blue barrel. And I brought it out here, and I took it, and I went, whoa. And it hit, you know, for impact. And what I didn't realize was Jonathan was downstairs with the young people. And then he came up later after the service and says, what are you doing? We thought the roof was going to come down. Because they're underneath, and I dropped this thing on there and just reverberated all over the place. So I'm, I'm trying to be nice, Jonathan, okay? Okay. All right. There we go. I right, put this way here. Don't we trips over. Oops, there I did it again. <laughs> What's it say? The blacksmith prepares a tool and works with it. Okay, now this thing, I did it. I actually made a grate out of this thing. That's trailer hitch. But you know what? I need a God to help me when I travel. When I'm on the roads. When I'm out there driving around. I need a God. So I'm going to take this piece of steel and I'm going to cut it up. And I'm going to mold it. And I'm going to build something with it. And I'm going to put it back together. And it's going to be my God of travel. Now, knowing how I weld... This is going to be one ugly God. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have Greg Welty weld it for me because he'd make he makes this God look beautiful. Me, I'd make it look like this thing had leprosy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to build me a God. Oh, great and mighty God. I worship you. I praise you. God of travel. You hold be thy name. <laughs> <laughs> My God, I travel. Take that with me. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. I need a God to protect me when I'm in my home. This is my God of the valley. This God is going to watch over me and take care of me and my family. I'm going to take a, a chisel and a hammer. I'm going to chisel an eye, maybe one eye. I don't know, maybe two eyes. I'm going to chisel eyes on there. I'm going to chisel nose on there, mouth on there. On the east side, I can chisel ears. I'm going to worship this thing. Thank you, oh God. Oh, great and mighty God of the valley. I worship and praise you. Thank you for taking care of my family. Conehead is thy name. <laughs> Woo. Praise you, Conehead. Oh. This is my favorite. Oh no. I like this one best. This is gonna be my God of the mountains. I love going in the mountains. Oh, you go up there, it's so beautiful, you feel so close to God, fresh air, all that stuff. I'm gonna make me a God of the mountains. One of those I was going to burn, and one of those I was going to make into a God. Which one? I, I think it's... This is the one I'm going to... No, this is... 
No, this is the one I'm going to burn. This is the one I'm going to burn. I'm going to put it over here. Get it out of the way. Take that back. Burn it on the grate that I made out of the trailer hitch. Because this is a bigger stick of wood than that one. Because I want a bigger God. Oh, worship you, almighty God of the mountains. I praise you. I glorify you. I just lift you up, almighty God. Lodgepole be thy name. I praise you, oh God. I thank you. I, I... I've got you upside down. Pray. Oh, God. Oh, no. You feel as foolish as I do. They were doing that in the Old Testament. This is what people would do. They would worship objects like this. Hence the title of my sermon today, A Broken and Fallen World. Because this represents the power and the uh, deception of this world that we are living in today. A broken and fallen world. But they also did it in the New Testament. And you know what? Even today, people are worshiping these idols. Worshiping things made of wood, stone, and metal. Matter of fact, not down the road very far, just the other side of Arli, there's the Garden of the Thousand Buddhas. I've never been there. I haven't seen the sign, but my wife sees it when we drive by some once in a while. The Garden of the Thousand Buddhas. So I had to look it up on the internet yesterday. They have 1,000 Buddhas. You know what they're made out of? Concrete. <laughs> but they, had a, they also have a gift shop. And, uh, I mean, no, it's scattered about the 10,000, around the 10 acres that they have, they have a thousand Buddhas, they say. But they do have a gift shop. And only the gift shop wasn't working on the internet. I mean, they didn't have it up and running or something, so I didn't get a look. But I imagine that they've got some Buddhas, maybe for sale, that are, that are made out of wood. They might have some Buddhas that are for sale that are made out of stone. Probably jade. They really like to make Buddhas out of jade. Maybe they got some made out of precious metal here. Well, this isn't necessarily precious unless you go down and buy one. Then you find out how precious metal they are. <laughs> but a gold and silver and things like that. They might have some made out of ceramic. They might even have some, get this, made out of plastic. Ooh, a plastic Buddha, a plastic God. Wouldn't that be awesome to have a plastic God, to serve a mighty and plastic God? Guess what? <laughs> there it is, turn right side up. It says master in its name. Matter of fact, this is a universal master. And things how it's just after Christmas, I tell you what, this thing's going to be master to a lot of people for the next few months. Yeah. But I praise God that Helen Sue and I do not, we are not master to this. Amen. You know why? We use Visa. demonstrate to you today the deception of a broken and fallen world. So often we have spent the last 20 years or more saying we are expecting great things. We are expecting great things. And then on the other ear we hear, yeah, but we live in a broken and fallen world. You can't expect that to happen. Yeah, but we're expecting great things. God says in His Word, the things that we are, we are priests and kings. But uh, we live in a broken and fallen world, don't you know? We can't expect to have all of that going on in our lives. We can't to expect to act like a priest or a king. The Bible says in there that... Let me get one. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But the world, that broken and fallen world, will whisper in our ears, No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't have everything that God says you can have. You can have part of it, maybe. 
You can have a little bit of it, but you can't have it. You live in a broken and fallen world after all. Look around you. Look what's going on. There's stuff. You just can't have everything that God says you can in his word. In Galatians 3.13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse. The curse is part of that broken and fallen world. But Christ has redeemed us from that broken and fallen world. See, that broken, fallen world, the curse is over here. He's taken us out of it, and he's put us over here next to him. But the thing is, that, that broken and fallen world keeps talking to us. We keep listening to it. And we, we're reading the Word. We see the things that God says we can be in His Word. And we're just rejoicing, you know. And, but really, yeah, we live in a broken and fallen world. So, you know, we, all the promises are yes and amen. But I know, I just, I don't see them happening, though. By His stripes, you are healed. But yeah, I just, ow. <laughs> and it con continues and continues to talk to us. See, there is no power in this broken and fallen world. There's no power here. Well, actually, Conehead might be able to help me in at home, protect my home, really. Oh, Conehead here. Because if I had it sitting out around someplace and burger comes in the middle of the night, he might trip over it and break his leg or something. But other than that, there is no power in old Conehead here to help me. There is no power in a God that I could carve out of here to help me. There is no power. There is no authority in what the, this broken and fallen world tells us. But we listen to it. And that's the problem. There's a song out there that says, and it's a slow fade. See, we t we're, we're on fire with the, for the Lord. And then we hear the things that the word tells us that broken and fallen world. you can't have that well but God says no you can't have that it just doesn't happen today but God says no but you, you just gotta no you can't do that you can't be that you God didn't really mean that he just and he keeps the broken and fallen world keep dragging us off let me tell you a little bit of a a little story. It's a true story. It's about this guy. And, and at the time the story was told, he was in his uh, middle age. But he tells it this way. His grandfather had a bad heart and he passed away before he was 60. This man's father had a bad heart and he passed away before he was 60 years old. And now this man was in his middle ages and he was starting to have heart problems because you see for his entire life his family everybody he knew was telling him I'm going to call him Bob I can't remember his name but we're going to call him Bob he said Bobby you got to be careful you have a bad heart remember you can't do this you can't do that you have a bad heart remember grandpa died from a bad heart your daddy died from a bad heart and you probably died from a bad heart you can't be you, you can't do this you can't do that you got to be careful you've got a bad heart his entire life he was told that and in his middle age he started having a bad heart he started going to the doctor he had high blush blood pressure and a bunch of other things that probably would kill him before he hit 60. One evening he went to a Bible study and there was a little old lady leading that Bible study. And during the Bible study she asked him, what's the truth about your heart? And he replied, well, my grandpa had a bad heart my daddy had a bad heart. Now I've got a bad heart. She says, no, what's the truth about your heart? He says, my granddaddy had a bad heart. My daddy had a bad heart. Now I've got a bad heart. She says, no, what is the truth about your heart? And he started getting mad. He said, I told you, my granddaddy. And she just went out and took her hand and slapped him on the side of his head and shook him and says, Isaiah 53, 5 is the truth. By his stripes, you are healed. And boy, the light hit him. And he, whoa. You know what he did? 
he went back and he started digging into this world, mm -hmm. into the word. And he stopped listening to those in the world that would told him that he had a bad heart. And he started digging into the word of God. And he started getting the word into his heart and into his mind and into his mouth and into his life. And he went to the doctor finally a few years later. He kept going, you know, checking out. And just before his 60th birthday, and the doctor called him on his birthday to give him the report of the latest checkup. And, and the doctor says, I don't know what in the world happened. But you don't have any heart problems. Matter of fact, you got a heart of a 16-year-old beating inside your chest. Why? Because he stood on the word of God. Ooh. And the same is for us. All the promises of God are yes and they are amen. A few weeks ago, we had a word. And God said, how much of me do you want? You want a little? I'll give you a little. If you want a lot, I'll give you a lot. If you want it all, I will give you all. God says he wants to give us all. The world doesn't want us to have anything. This morning when I was reading my devotions, I read this. Perfect example of this broken and fallen world trying to steal from us. You see, the broken and fallen world comes from the devil. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. It's found in Matthew chapter 20, talking about the two blind men. Now as they went out of Jericho and a great multitude followed him, Jesus, and behold, two men sitting by the road, and when they had heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. Then the multitude, the broken and fallen world, warned them that they should be quiet. Shut up, they told him. That's what the broken and fallen world is telling us today. Shut up, be quiet. Go sit in your corner. But they would have none of it. But instead, they cried out all the more. Amen. And you know what? They got their healing. It goes on to say, I got there's a little bit more here I gotta read. Then the multitude uh, have mercy on us, O Son of God. So Jesus stood still. The world knows that if you cry out to God, He's going to take notice. Amen. They, Jesus stood still, and He came to them, and He healed them, and they left victorious. Amen. Now, I, Casey told you, this is going to end a little different today. Because this is a very significant day. This is the last Sunday of this year and the last Sunday of this decade. There have been 521 Sundays before. And God chose me to put speak on this one. I thought, oh, there's a reason. Because next Sunday is a very significant Sunday. Because it starts out the new year and a new decade and Pastor Chuck will be back and he is going to he is going to the what I don't know what he's gonna say, but whatever it is it is going to begin to set the pace yeah. and the tone yeah. for the next yeah. ten years. Yeah. And part of that is victory. Yes. Amen. Yes. God wants us to have victory. That's right. 
In 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, we have the story of Hezekiah, King Hezekiah. And, uh, wait a second, I gotta get my notes straight here. I gotta walk, worship team, would you come back up? <laughs> See, we're gonna, we're gonna do a little something a little different. As we're gonna read in, in, Hez, in Hezekiah here, Three armies came against them. Okay? They were coming to kill them, destroy them, wipe them off the face of the map. And King Hezekiah and the people of the land called upon the Lord. They went before him and says, We have no power over this great multitude that is coming. And one of the Levites stood up. And he said this, and he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and all ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliffs of Zis, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Jews, Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Go out tomorrow against them, for the Lord be with you. And you know what they did? They probably didn't get much sleep last ni that night. Instead, they were excited. They believed the Lord that he was going to give them a victory. So they got up the next morning and early, it said, early. I got up at 6.30 this morning. That was early. I was excited. Yeah. They got up early and they went out and God told them to go out there and watch what ha was going to happen because he was going to give them victory. And they did something unique. Something you don't normally do. They put the musicians in front. And when they went out there, they began to praise and worship the Lord. And when they began to praise and worship the Lord, the Bible says God began to work and defeat the enemy. They began to fight amongst themselves and they killed themselves. They didn't even have to do anything. But, except spend three days hauling all the spoils back to their house. So today, being the last Sunday of not only this year, but the last Sunday of this decade, we are going to go out with praise. Yeah. The world wants us to shut up. Be quiet! Like they told the two blind men. Be quiet! Don't say anything! Just be love. We don't need you here. But I'm here to tell you, we're not going quietly. We're going to take an example from Jehoshaphat. And we are going to sing and praise. But before we do that, we have a video here. He's going to show this video. Now, I want you to know, this video is a little exciting. And if you want to jump up and shout and praise God, you can do that. If you want to dance a little jig during this video, you can do that. It's okay. If you want to come up front and praise the Lord here, you can do that. Because as soon as this video is over, I told them, I want them cranking it up. We're going to worship the Lord. We are going to leave this service in high praise. We're going to go out, not quietly and with a whimper, but we're going to go out with a roar of praise. We are going to set the example. We're going to set the mood. We're going to set it up for next Sunday and next year and next decade. So we're going to go out of this decade in praise. Now, for you in, in uh, Facebook land and YouTube land, copyright issues say we can't show this to you. So it's going to be kind of quiet for 3 minutes and 18 seconds, but Sam has got the address on there for you to go look at it. You need to go look at this. 
because it will minister to you. Yeah. But as soon as the video is over, they'll turn it back on and we're going to go and praise God. And after the song, I will dismiss you. And if you want to stick around and praise the Lord some more, we're going to keep going, okay? Yeah. But uh, right now, we are going to do that video. So go ahead.